All right, joining me today for a very special Life and Surround, it is a video call with Mary Fall and Mark Doyle, uh, here to discuss the <laughs> brand new <laughs> stereo and surround Blu-ray of From the Dark Side of the Moon. Yeah. And uh, we had our adventures getting this Zoom meeting up and running, so I think that's where the giggling's coming from. So, um, Mary, uh, just to give a brief introduction, um, obviously you sang with October Project. Yep. Uh, you've done solo albums, EPs. You have songs and movie soundtracks. You've done some acting. Um, and then, Mark, you're no slouch yourself uh, playing with no. Me Meatloaf, Brian Adams, Hall and Oates. Um, with Mary, you were hand selected for this project by the producer, David Werner. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so that's about all the introduction that I feel uh, is necessary. Uh, if either of you wanna give some highlights or say what you'd like to say. I, I, I'd say after, you know, this, this project came about after um, Sony Classical. I, I had been signed to Sony Classical and BMG came in and kind of took over Sony Classical. And so my contract wasn't renewed. They didn't want to do it. I, I was kind of signed as an experiment for them to try different things. They thought that what I did was kind of cinematic. And um, so after that, I was sort of at a loss. I was just, I didn't know what I was going to do, but I, I, I knew I didn't want to go back out and just do the singer songwriter girl with guitar thing at that point i wasn't ready to do that and i wanted something that would be a little different you know a little more i wouldn't say theatrical exactly but um i wanted something grand and i i had gotten a new manager and he said why don't you think about maybe re-recording a you know a, a classic rock album and i was thinking well, i don't that's not really me <laughs> but then they started you know we started tossing around albums and i realized how how much pink floyd of all of of all of the records i could have done the one that resonated me with me the most was dark side of the moon which i grew up with my older brother i had i came, i came from a big irish german very catholic family a lot of kids older siblings and uh, mark same kind of background basically and um but I was lucky in that I had older siblings with great record collections. And my, my brother, Alan, was the Prague guy. And so he had a lot of Pink Floyd. And um, it was, of all of his music, it was what I resonated with the most. And I think it was, because A, it was very melodic. And I used to tell Alan it was boy music for girls. Right. Um, and it was also, those lyrics and I think Mike you and I were back and forth the other day Roger Waters had his finger on the pulse of the 20th and 21st century in a way that um, I think was as good as or, or on a level with T.S. Eliot you know the wasteland poet and and that he his his themes and his subject in a way he, he approaches things um, speaks to the world now even. Dark Side speaks to our world at this minute more than it even did when it came out in the early 70s. It is profoundly prophetic to me. Yeah, and, and so, I, I know that uh, you and I had spoken about um, how we both have a personal connection at this point with the lyrics. Uh, I didn't mean to cut you off there, I just felt like it was an appropriate time to jump in, but um, like there's really great liner notes in this Blu-ray and um, it talks a lot about like why you guys even decided to do this album. Yeah, yeah. And you know, like the, it would, conventional wisdom would say the most personal thing that you could do would be to write your own songs and produce them mm -hmm. in a way that you, the arrangement appeals to you. Mm -hmm. Instead, you chose to tackle this classic material and um, Mark, you did a lot of the arranging and yet you yeah. found a way to make this deeply, deeply personal. It may have been like, you know, ironically, the most personal thing that you could have done. Well, Mike, I had been feeling and have been for a long time, these, before any of this crazy, surreal period we're living through, um, profoundly frightened by where humanity was going. 
and and especially with the advent you know all of us on on this this call right now have lived through this sort of pre ai pre digital pre internet world and and it wasn't a perfect world but we had so much more freedom and time to imagine and i feel that with the advent of this new world that we've moved to we're some of our center our souls as human beings there's this constant influx of information coming at us constantly like a cacophony it's like it's like they're almost like these these digital gin that come down and it's just it's a swirl of information and i think and we're all sort of addicted to these these things that that we're using right now and i think in the center of it we're losing what makes life meaningful and and the experience of being human of touching and taste and feel and everything you do everything and and dark side spoke to those feelings more than i could i wish i could write like that <laughs> i i really do you know i'm good i can write a nice song about soldiers or home or 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 my husband or but i um i just don't write that way without sounding hokey or preachy and i hate that kind of a song and i think Roger i know Water, how you feel uh you yeah. know as a songwriter myself i yeah. uh often feel my own limitations mostly yeah. and then there's yeah. all these songs that i hear that i hear it and it makes me feel like man i wish i could write that so i, oh, I get where you're coming yeah. from absolutely and and i felt that to express all of these feelings that i was having that dark side of the moon to me has all of the elements of a great work of art in that like a great opera or a shakespearean drama you can interpret it a thousand different ways and it still holds up so many people have covered you know so all the bands that have covered dark side of the moon and it it kind of works every time like you can reinterpret a shakespeare play and i think it's because not only is it is it just well written in every way but like a great work of art it has a for me a deeply spiritual or call it a philosophical message about all the things that i was just talking about and it has a timeless message which great works of art do so i i felt comfortable going in and we all did sort of it was it was sort of groping in the dark at first but we wanted to make it our own it wouldn't be worth doing if we didn't make it our own you just i i'm not a cover artist where i'm just going to go you know there's for me it was almost a religious it's almost a religious experience when i perform this because i feel the message is so important and powerful yeah so i can that, i can feel that coming through and uh part of that is transmitted oh yeah. um through your use of some foreign languages the bhagavad gita yeah. Right. So what happened, you know, I, I don't know if you've experienced this when you're writing or working on something, but somehow the elements all come together. And a lot of synchronicity begins to happen. Like that somehow these, these powers, these unseen powers, like will throw a book off a shelf, you know, or just be laying there. And, and that happened. I was looking for David and Mark wanted me to find a lot of chants that I could, you know, repeat over and over again, because I had to become the substitute for a lot of the instruments and right. um so i'm like well what am i going to do and and so there it was the bhagavad gita i had an old you know copy of it I, I mean i've read little bits of it but i didn't you know i'm i'm not a scholar of sanskrit by any means sure. not even close you know and but i thought huh and i was thinking about robert oppenheimer who had been the inventor one of the inventors of the atomic bomb he was in charge of the manhattan project and i remember I remember seeing a fascinating documentary about him and that he had also been, a, you know, because he's a brainiac, a, a Sanskrit scholar. And he said two things when they asked him about, do you, you know, have you ever, you know, is this the first time in history that they've ever done something like this? And he said, well, the first time in the history that we know of. Hmm. That was weird. And the second thing was when he, he held the test for the bomb out in the desert for the first time, obviously it was a profound moment for everybody witnessing the immense destructive power and he muttered i um something in sanskrit and what he the english translation is i have become death the destroyer of worlds yes and um that just sends chills and when i looked up and i thought well i mean it's probably 
incomprehensible if you do the Sanskrit. So I looked it up, the pronunciation in Sanskrit, and it was the perfect rhyme for us and them. So it was Utu Samavada Sikaham Ubavaskabaviziatam. That's it. It was right. perfect. perfect. There are also some chants that they spin around the room with your voice through uh, yeah. breathe. Yeah. Which brings and through us some of the to, instrumental passages too. Mm-hmm. And the thing about, you know, the thing about this 5.1 is that, you know, I'm very low, obviously you can tell I'm very low tech in, <laughs> in this house. And I live in an old house that is, there's small, it's small room, small room, small room. And it's, it's not conducive to surround sound, you know? Mm-hmm. And so I, I don't, I don't have that technology, but Mark does. And, he, he said, when he was saying, Mary, you, I found this, the surround mix, and we thought it had, well, it was, lo- the, the mastered version had been lost in a fire at the, the, the mastering place, and I, you know, it never occurred to me to release that, and then Mark found it again in his audio files, and he said, you, you have to hear this, and then I sent it to, to Rick, because, uh, you know, our Rick Peppy, and yes. he, um, he's a surround maniac and you know he was in his last days and kind of grumpy and irritable um but <laughs> yes <laughs> he, he but you know uh, but he was such a passionate fan and right he heard it and he called me and he said you have to release this and he called it the um the hope diamond of surround sounds and i was like well i wouldn't know about such things so all right so I, if i, I can said, interject if i can interject <laughs> Yeah. Uh, there, there are four things that are most chagrinning to surround fans. Number yeah. one is when a surround mix gets shelved and it's done and we know about it and, and for political reasons or financial or whatever, it doesn't get right. released. So Elton yeah. John, Elton John comes to mind, Deep Purple. Um, so just the fact that this got resurrected and brought forth, you know, is an amazing thing. And then the other three things are when uh, an album comes out on some lossy medium, like, you know, 20 year old DVD technology with Dolby Digital or DTS, you chose LPCM, which is lossless and just an amazing, wonderful choice. Um, Well, credit Mark for that. And and then the other thing is when like, it gets locked in an expensive box set, um, you know, Rush, A Farewell to Kings, one of my favorite surround mixes. And you, in, in order to get it, you either have to buy this hundred plus dollar box set. So, you know, you've put out an affordable Blu-ray, um, something that was mixed by a wonderful engineer, had gotten shelved and then it was redeemed. And so it's just, this is an incredible story for surround fans. Yeah. Um, hopefully it is yeah. a message that will encourage other artists to get your surround mix out and so the other thing i was going to say is that putting out a surround mix gives you the opportunity to gain new fans um i was aware of some of your work in the past such as the song that opens up gods and generals and that's an incredible song and um my feelings about that movie have changed over the years but in going back and re-listening to that song like that song still has all the power for me that it ever did Uh, you know but even still like that that didn't cause me to springboard into your catalog right where often what happens um is that there are going to be people who discover this 5.1 mix and by bob clear mountain by the way uh for those that don't know and they're going to check out your christmas album and you know your last uh solo record love and gravity yeah. And then also the things that you have coming coming up, and I hope yeah. that I hope that a five point one mix will be um, a potential on the table for you. But yeah. a lot of surround fans don't just you know totally disregard you if you don't put out something in surround. Like I listen to stereo in my car, for instance. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, you know the 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 nice part of that, if if that if that does indeed occur, um, it would it would be lovely. I'd love for people to hear this, and it's also that Mark and I have a band and we, we, we tour, I go all over the country, but uh, uh, you know, because of the limitations, um, I, I have to go by myself most of the time. And it's like, you know, I'm the girl with the guitar at the, you know, but when I play the East coast, when I can, when it's a theater or something like that, Mark and I do a band show and 
the past year and a half or so, we've been doing the, our second set is our version of Dark Side of the Moon from right. start to finish. And we have film and it's a multimedia. And, um, you know, that's how we got the deal that uh, we did we did this record as a labor of love. I, I didn't have a record deal at the time. And we were all doing this on a wing and a prayer, basically. And um, our, my manager shopped it around and I mostly got no's. And then V2 Records took a shine to it. and. They flew up, we were working in Syracuse, and they flew up to Syracuse to see the show. And it was one of those, you know, Mickey and Judy throw a show together. I called Syracuse University, it was a summertime, and I said, do you have any interns who would wanna work on a stage with, and the guy who was the head of the department, the stage you know, design department said, I'll do it. He came over, he found a beautiful theater for us to do it in. We, um, he built this stage for us, and then uh, my my boyfriend at the time put together all of these amazing movies, these sort of avant-garde, dark, you know, interesting films. And <laughs> the boys from, from from V2 flew up, and then of course that was the night that we had a terrible storm, and the power went out all over Syracuse. And then right when they were about to leave, they're like, "Look, we got to go home. We have a long. We we got to leave now." The lights come on. And we said, please, please, just let us perform this for you. It was about 11 o'clock at night, and the moon came out, and it was full. And they said, all right, that's it. You have 10 minutes or something. And we, we went out, <laughs> and we performed. We, we got everything up and running, like, within five minutes. And we performed the show, and they came backstage, and basically they told us we had a deal. Nice. And so... And, uh, and then Justice This Record was about to come out. Of course, the story is in the liner notes, V2 ran out of money. And they, they, they basically gave lifeboats to the artists that had records coming out. So I, I bought the rights back and didn't know what I was going to do with this. this thing, I, I eventually, I, I sell those advanced copies. They sent me the boxes and boxes full of the advanced V2 copies. And right. So I sell those at shows. And, uh, but here's the deal. When Mark's, Mark forced me to sit down and listen to the surround sound, and I was like, uh, he said, no, sit. Here's a glass of wine. I Good want for you, you to Mark. listen to this. <laughs> and then, and the thing is, once I heard that surround mix, there's no going back after that. And, and you know I, that Pink I, Floyd, uh, back in their heyday, did their concerts in quad. Right. So wow. there, there actually like is a connection to their intent. And uh, Alan Parsons wow. did a, a, a quad mix of Dark Side of the Moon in 1973. Yeah. And um, that was what a couple of years ago began to engage me more in the album musically because it's just been all over the radio and it's so cliched yeah. almost at this point. Yeah. And then also my personal experiences, um, you know, began to draw me more into the lyrics like we've talked about the last few days. Yeah. And can you, can you thing... talk about what the decision was like to get this album mixed in 5.1 in the first place and to use Bob Clear Mountain? Because I think that's an important part of the Mark, story for surround it. fans. You, yeah, you let me take connect it from there. Yeah, yeah, I'll connect the dots just a little bit. Okay, um, I met David Warner in 1973. We actually made three albums together. We made two for RCA, and then the uh, the album we made in 1979 for Epic uh, was produced by he and I and Bob Claremont. And uh, I had worked with Bob a bunch before that uh, with on a Cindy Bullens record that I did and. Uh, but so we spent about nine months together doing the David Werner album. So we were close with Bob and David was obviously very aware of me. I was his uh, band leader and toured with him when, when he was out touring. So um, when it came, when we started recording here, we recorded almost the entire album here in my house and uh, I was the main musician and then we needed to have it mixed. And basically Bob was the, the one that, that, first occurred to David and I. And um, a lot of people think that, that you know, these, w with Bob, the 5.1 is something that happens simultaneously while he's doing the stereo mix. And when I was just in New York at uh, Turtle Tone mastering it, uh, Mike Fossenkemper, the mastering engineer said, well, obviously he did the 5.1 first and then folded it down to stereo. And I said, no, absolutely not. Basically I was there and, you know, he does the stereo mix and then he has yeah. his all 
sort of modified so that the matrix of it is able to assign different channels to different things for, for the surround. Uh, but then, you know, that's pretty much the uh, one and done approach. But then he really got into it and uh, just started going nuts when it became time to, you know, the stereo mix of each song is done and it was time to do the 5.1. And then he started just really stuff. You could tell that he was super engaged. And uh, as a matter of fact, a week after he mixed it, he was in Las Vegas for an audio show. And he ran into Sir George Martin and was telling him about the album. And he said, you know, it's the best surround mix I've ever done. So uh, I don't yeah, know. It, it really is up there on the level of like what he did with Roxy Music's Avalon. Yeah. This is yeah. a great mix. So if I could just um, like interject personally again, um, Mary, you seem to be like the nicest person on the face of the planet. <laughs> and then, um, you know, how Rick had got a hold of me a few months ago, um, alerting me that he thought the Blu-ray was going to go into production and hoping that I would uh, take some interest in it. And um, then fast forwarding to, um, you know, talking with you more and um, just looking at the opportunity to review it. I had some yeah. qualms about, uh, you know, what if I don't like the album? Uh, <laughs> what if the mix really isn't that good? Because um, right. I am either brutally honest on my channel or I just won't cover a title. Um, right. So uh, I had, like you talked about in the liner notes, some uh, trepidation about doing the album and then the Blu-rays, you know, headed to my house and I'm just like, like, oh, please, please, please let this, <laughs> let this be pretty good. So I, I put the Blu-ray on and um, it auto plays in 5.1. So thank you for that. And um, the mix starts to come on and you've got vocals swirling all around the room. And um, I was a little bit concerned that this was gonna be an acapella thing, like a Bobby McFerrin album, which would be great. <laughs> it's just, I'm not sure I'd want 40 minutes of that of Dark Side of the Moon. Right. And so the mix starts to engage you, it draws you in uh, at very active use of the surrounds in an extremely tasteful way. And then the band comes in for Breathe and there are great grooves uh, for the time. Uh, money is a more of an upbeat, fun thing. And then Us and Them is just extremely powerful and the album ends super strong as well. So by the time I was done listening to the album, I was just awestruck and uh, was more than happy to uh, just, you know, help support it, promote it, review it, whatever I can do. Um, that That is extremely heartfelt because this is music that speaks to me. It is, the arrangements are superbly well done. There are moments where this album has all the power that I was hoping for. Uh, it, it's creative, it's inventive. I love all the chanting and um, I hear little bits of um, instrumentation. It might be a Mellotron, it might be some sort of small organ or whatever, but they're just these moments that are just perfect and it's different. You know, David, da David and Mark spent so much time and Mark, you, you should speak to this on every tiny little detail. You know, Mark, you were telling me about you were going for just this one. Go, go share with okay. him. <laughs> so uh, basically, David is, the, I'm the music guy. I'm the one that has to like sort of translate everything and make everything, uh, you know, figure out how to do all of these uh, sort of Yoko Ono concepts of, you know, <laughs> make green. Anyway, when we were working on Breathe, we spent three days just getting the sort of background wash that's in the in the background because he's going imagine that you're newly born and you're laying on this dewy grass and the sun is coming up and you're breathing in and it's all about life and it's like how the heck are we going to do that so we <laughs> searched and layered and layered and came up with this sort of sparkly effervescent drones going on behind the thing and it was great but it's reason and long days and uh you know so that's that that's sort of the attention to detail that went into this all along and as we w made it through each song i mean the first thing we did was us and now and we just put everything we put our best foot forward and did everything and that's you know 
sort of sent that track out with, uh, you know, our manager to see if there was any interest in it. And then once we got the go ahead to continue doing it, um, every song that we came to, David would say to me, okay, imagine that we're the producers and there's all different producers on this album and we're being hired to do just this one track. So, uh, and that was really important when it came to things like On the Run or Any Color, because, right. you know, basically those aren't the landmark songs from that album. So it's like, in a way, who wants to do these songs? You know, it's like you get the gig to produce uh, On the Run, you've got to come up with something really special. <laughs> so that was sort of the, the modus operandi throughout that we'd have to just basically, you know, get up the gumption for every track to just go into it like what we did with us and them. And man, it, right. it, it was hard. It was challenging. Well, and I do love those moments where Mary is interpreting the saxophone line, in interpreting like the sequencer. Uh, those are just, they make, this recording is so special and the, the mix is special. Uh, I encourage people to go check it out. I want to wrap this up because I don't know how much long uh, this meeting can last on my Wi-Fi and also uh, Zoom has like a time limit. Mm -hmm. um, but I do want to send people to maryfall.com uh, where this Blu-ray can be bought and also her other works. I'm just astounded. Uh, this is a, a happy surprise for me. Like, you know, I did a video recently about happy surprises in surround. Um, you definitely have gained a fan and uh, not only me, but um, I'm seeing a lot of excitement on you know quadraphonic quad and on uh the life and surround facebook and stuff so um rick is a hero mark you're a hero mary you're a hero you guys um chose to to do a 5.1 project and you've brought it to us lossless and you know affordably and i just feel very grateful especially like you're saying in this time where we're all trying to live through this coronavirus isolation and stuff this is what people need is, you know, music. And like, I put this on for my wife yesterday and her comments were, Mary has a beautiful voice, uh, number one, and that this is a fairly relaxing approach to this material. Um, that you guys do rock out appropriately, but um, you, uh, to me, this feels like yoga or, or meditative and, uh, I think it's exactly what people need if they're willing to give it a chance uh, while we're kind of all stuck at home trying to stay safe and healthy. Yeah. Thank you, Mike. Thank so that, you. That's all I have to say. Mary, would you like to close? I, I'd say this is, of all of the records I've done, this was meant to be in surround sound because now it's hard for me to go back to the regular CD because so much of the detail is is it's not lost but when i that's that's what i heard that in, right. in in this surround like things i forgotten i'd done you know and um it's total immersion it was i mean you you guys listen to this all the time but for me <laughs> i'm trying to convince my husband to to try to put surround sound in so um thank you mike so much for 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 promoting this and helping us with this i'd, I'd love for those who love this 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 particular kind of listening experience to 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 have the chance to experience this and listen to it thank you so much awesome uh, i'm happy to help and i hope that the uh the blu-ray does extremely well and i look forward to connecting with your work as we go forward thank you so much all right thanks thanks for being on the channel mary and uh mark thank as you. well it was a pleasure to speak with both of you i really appreciate it okay great thank you so much all right, Bye. take care. Yeah, stay safe and healthy, okay? Thank you, you too. You too. That's the same. All right, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.